call me old school, but there is a part of me that sits around and thinks if you're using PFF as your go to on why you chose one player for defensive player of the year over another, maybe you shouldn't be one of the people voting on defensive player of the year. What's going on, everybody? I'm Noah Strackbine. Thank you for jumping on to Steelers To Go, your daily to-go cup of Pittsburgh Steelers news and analysis. Find us on YouTube.com slash All Steelers Talkers. Subscribe anywhere. You get your podcast, the Pittsburgh Steelers. They are waiting to hear if TJ Watt is once again Defensive Player of the Year, and he was already named the AFC Defensive Player of the Year by the 101 committee, part of the 101 NFL Awards. But as votes come in and debates begin and everybody wants to talk about who it is and who it comes down to, it seems there are one of two decisions here, TJ Watt or Miles Garrett. And one name, a very prominent name in the business, a very prominent and respected name in what he has done across the football landscape and the football media world. Well, I got to say, I highly disagree with his way of going about voting for Defensive Player of the Year. NBC Sports' Peter King announced that Miles Garrett got his vote over T.J. Watt simply because of this. Quote, Garrett was high in both PFF grade and next-gen pass rush metri- metrics, excuse me, and his team was the number one defense in football. Awesome. So that is why we are looking beyond play on the field, and simply at PFF grades and analytics. And I'm all for getting a deeper dive and looking at PFF for certain things and different charts and utilizing it in the proper manner. Once it gets into the grades, I start to question whether or not that is actually a useful tool or a bunch of kids and a bunch of people who really don't watch as much football as they claim to watch sit around and grade people mostly based off of bias. That's where we stand. And again, maybe I'm old school, but TJ Watt's season ended with a league-leading 19 sacks, 19 tackles for loss, 36 quarterback hits, three forced fumbles, eight pass deflections, four forced fumbles, excuse me, three fumble recoveries, an interception, and obviously a game-winning touchdown against Miles Garrett's Cleveland Browns. Miles Garrett, on the other hand, finished with 14 sacks, two less than the season before, 17 tackles for loss, 30 quarterback hits, four forced fumbles, which does tie TJ Watt, congratulations, one fumble recovery, and three pass deflections. Stats-wise, which Peter King does not mention at all, TJ Watt smokes Miles Garrett. And I'm sorry, but stats speak very highly, in my opinion, I sit around and I look at stats and I say, I remember a time when football was all about stats. How good were your stats? How good was your actual play on the field to collect statistics? Well, TJ Watts was pretty damn good. And the last time TJ Watts stats were this good, he won defensive player of the year. And it was before we got into the, oh, well, the PFF grade says this or the next gen stats does this. So I started to look and say, hey, well, you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I should sit around and say, maybe I am not 100% correct in misjudging the grades. But just hear me out. Miles Garrett's defensive grade from PFF, 93.6. TJ Watts, 91.9. Okay. This is where we get a bit confusing. His defensive rush grade for Miles Garrett is 78.4. For TJ Watt, it's 80.7. Okay. His pass rush grade, 94.7. TJ Watts, 91.7. Got him beat there. And then his coverage grade, TJ Watts, 70.6. Miles Garrett, 59.5. So where do you come up with the 93 compared to the 91? How does that go into it? Is it simply, well, this guy looks really good rushing the football. However, TJ Watt gets to the quarterback more. Is that the argument? Is that how you come up with it? 
It doesn't make any sense. And J.J. Watt has gone off on this before, and I think half of us has sat around and smiled and laughed a little bit watching that Pat McAfee segment and saying, yeah, you're spot on, J.J. You're spot on. The Defensive Player of the Year award has somewhat become a who hasn't had it yet. Who is the guy that should be next? Who is the next great NFL player? And don't get me wrong, I think Miles Garrett is a fantastic NFL player. I truly, truly do. But there are parts of me, and I think the more people try to argue it, the more I start to realize that he might go down as the most overhyped player in NFL history. He might go down as the most overrated player in NFL history. And I'm not saying that he's not good because I think he's fantastic. But people try to make him out to be the greatest thing of all time. The next Aaron Donald, the next Lawrence Taylor, the next J.J. Watt. And they completely ignore that the next J.J. Watt plays in Pittsburgh and his name is T.J. Watt. Or that the next big name on defense actually produces on the field and has the numbers to show for it and does things that, well, other guys in his position do not do. That's where we are. Look at I respect Peter King. I respect his opinion. I respect what he has done for the media world and for the NFL world and for all of it. I expect his deep dives and his knowledge of the game. I have a hard time sitting here and saying that if you're using PFF as a baseline for anything, when it comes to PFF grades, that you should not be allowed or that you should be allowed to vote for Defensive Player of the Year. Because if you ask anybody on the field, and I get it that Miles Garrett walked away as the first team NFL PA all pro or whatever. I get it. But ask Jason Kelsey and Travis Kelsey. Google their segment about the NFL PA all pro team. They laugh it right off and they say that's not the one that you're looking for. What you're looking for is the all pro team. And that's TJ Watt. And defensive player of the year, it probably should be TJ Watt. And you could make up whatever argument you want. You could look at the baseline grade all you want. You could use pressure rate or this or that or whatever analytic you want to come up with to skew your argument in one direction or the other. But if you just put everything down on the table and lay it all out in front of you, TJ Watt has done more on the field. The grades, in my opinion, do not add up. I don't know how you come up with that if you are PFF outside of the fact that you always kind of move the bar more towards Miles Garrett than any other defender in the NFL, and that's just PFF's reputation. And we've hit a point where PFF, man, it's not what it used to be, and people are starting to acknowledge that it's not as good as, well, we want to make it out to be, and some people do make it out to be. It's very useful in a lot of ways. In a lot of ways, it does things like this, and it hurts legacies and reputations and awards. And in this case, it might hurt T.J. Watts when he should be the Defensive Player of the Year.